Welcome uh, everyone to the Thursday evening uh, class called Viewer's Choice. So this is a class where uh, club members uh, can submit their games. Also the uh, so people who watch the YouTube videos, they can submit their games via email preferably pgn format your game and the email address to send your games is info at stlouischessclub.org so this is especially for our the, uh, youtube audience if you have a played a game and you know you want to have the game analyzed by a grandmaster submit it at info at stlouischessclub.org and and possibly your game game will be picked for game analysis so for today, we have a couple of games from uh, uh, YouTube uh, uh, people who sent us, but we we'll take a look at the game of one of the persons who is here, and that is a strong Ashish here. Uh, rating is over 2000, right? Yeah. Recently broke 2000, and Ashish, what color are you? White. Ashish is playing white, and this is Ashish here, and let's go over the game. Uh, and you're playing against? 1800. Ashish is 2000, he's playing 1800. So 200 points below. Go. Uh, e4. Okay. C5. Okay. Knight f3. Okay. D6. D4. <laughs> Cd4. Mm -hmm. Queen d4. Okay. Okay. Bishop d5. Bishop d7. Okay. So this is a line if you want to uh, avoid the main theory. Main theory you take back with the queen on d4. Okay. So this avoids all the main theory. Now continue. Uh, bishop c6. Okay. Bishop c6. C4. Knight uh, f6. Knight C3. Uh-huh. G6. Okay. Castle. Castles. Bishop G7. Bishop so this is we have a hedgehog, hedgehog uh, setup here also. The structure here. Uh, bishop E3. Okay, now black cannot take because the bishop is unprotected. Castle. Castle. Queen D3. Queen D3, okay. Knight D7. Okay. AD1. Rook AD1. Hmm. Not FD1. So it's 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 always tricky to realize where you want to put the rooks here. You want to put the rooks like this, or you want to put it like this, and here. It's really, really hard to, to say at the moment, you know, hard to tell, you know, which way is the best way to put, put the rooks. Okay, what happened? Uh, A6. So knight D7, what did you play? Rook A D1, okay, yeah. A6. Rook F E1. Mm -hmm. Then queen A5. Queen a5, okay. Knight d4. Queen d5. Yep. Queen e2. Feels like Ashish, you did something already a little. slightly suspicious, no? Yeah. And now? Rook a d8. It seems like black is quite comfortable, you know, with two bishops. Uh, let's go back a little bit, see if we could do something better. Hmm. I was always under the impression you go bishop g5 in this position. So you can put pressure on the knight. That was my impression. Usually you bring the bishop here to put pressure. And if he castles... Then you go queen d3. Uh, 
and then you put the rooks on d1 and e1 with this setup okay 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 so bishop p3 i'm not sure because it looks like it's going to be a little bit vulnerable so he castled yeah now what do you put Okay, if you want, queen a5, okay? Knight d4, knight d5. Knight d4, okay. Was bishop d4 a consideration? Because black has a very strong bishop on d4. Did you have a thought of maybe, you know, trying to trade the bishop off? Did you consider that? Why not? I, I just want to play knight d4 to exchange like two bishops. Like well, he opponent has two bishops. When opponent has two bishops, what do we try to do usually? Exchange one of the bishops so he loses the two bishop advantage. Because bishops are very strong when they work together. Here you play bishop d4, you're trying to exchange one of the bishops. Okay? Ashish is white, yeah. Ashish here is white. Go ahead. 95. 95, okay, attacking the queen. Queen e2. Uh huh. Rook a b8. Okay. A3. Rook f c8. Uh huh. F4. Okay. 97. Okay. E5. E5. Wow. Very interesting. At the same time, quite sharp. Quite sharp as well. And if takes, you're going to go knight c6. Ashish is taking advantage of the fact that the knight is vulnerable. And if capture occurred, he can take here and then take the unprotected knight on d7. Queen C7. Okay. No, he didn't cook on E5. Queen C7 here. Okay. E takes D6. E takes D6. I was expecting pawn takes, but he took with the queen, which I thought was a Taking with the queen, it's a risky thing to do, you know? So I'm very, very surprised. So you take with this? No, he took with the queen. Which was, uh, okay, he took with the queen. Wow. It feels very dangerous, right? It seems like you're walking, walking into a trouble here, voluntarily. So what happened? Well, I thought we were going to pawn. So. Knight f5? Yeah, knight f5. Knight f5, attacking the queen. And again, if you take the knight, you can take the queen here. So what happened? Queen e6. Queen e6, okay. Knight takes g7. Knight takes g7. King g7. King g7. Bishop d4. Check. Knight, yeah. Knight f6. Uh, queen e6. F takes e6. Rook e6. Yeah. King f7. 
D E one, uh huh. Nine G A. B three. B five. Uh C B five. A B five. Why did you play B three here? You were concerned about your C four pawn, right? So isn't it better to play something like this? Maybe. That way you can continue playing b4, a4, b5, and you have a nice queenside majority where you're pushing your pawns, no? And also you're fixing the pawn on b7 now, though. that pawn cannot move. Because if he plays b5, you will just simply take en passant. And now I want to play b4, a4 and then B5. Okay? B4, A4, and B5. Got it? Okay. Okay, what happened? So after B3 and B5, I play B3 instead of C5. Yeah, play B3. Then <coughs> huh? B5. Huh? B5. Mm -hmm. Uh, C B C B A B. Okay. B four. You're trying to get a bishop on C five, correct? Yeah. Bishop D seven. Rook G Rook. Oh yeah. Six E three. Mhm. Mm Rook B seven. B7, okay. 94. Bishop C6. Knight G5, King E8. Knight G5, King E8, and take a pawn? Yeah. Very nice. Now, when you know, now you increase your advantage to two pawns. Okay. Very nice. Rook D8. Yes? Oh, wait, no, I thought it was rook C8. Oh, wait, now? So the rook moves, can he now go a uh, knight to f6? He could, but knight f6, knight takes f6. And then bishop takes and then you bishop f6. Yeah, you're trading, yeah. Oh, I did that. He did that, okay. <laughs> Good thinking. That's what Ashish did also. Rook. Uh, I'm not sure if I would have done that. That knight on g8 didn't look very, very active. I mean, the knight on g8, I mean, it's not a very good piece, okay? So you could also play a move like bishop c5 here, for example, and still have a very nice advantage, okay? You retain, retain the big advantage. So here, takes, takes. Then what happened? Uh, rook c3. Bishop d5. Rook c5. Rook c5, okay. King f7. Rook f6. King f6. Mm -hmm. Bishop g2. Uh, bishop takes g2. Bishop g2, okay. King g2. Okay. Then trade the rookie seven, rookie seven. King seven. Yeah. Okay. I missed king. What happened? Oh, king has three. Yeah, this should be winning. Yeah. Should be no no big problem to win this, you know, because you have two extra pawns. Okay. King e six. King e four. Uh-huh. Not g4, huh? Are you trying to go this way? Yeah. Okay. King f6. Rook c6 check. King f7. Uh, 
of King King D. Yeah, King D five. Okay. Rook A seven. Okay. Rook C three. Okay. Rook A eight. Rook E two. Keeping the king caught and ready to cross here. Rook A six. King C five. Rook F six. Yeah, this this F four pawn, it's no problem. We just as long as we have this. Yeah, rook F four. Uh huh. King A five. Then he's up. Yeah, now you just push the pawns. Yeah, this was a good game, Ashish. Good game. I mean, in the opening, I'm not sure a little bit, you know. The opening needs to be discussed much more further, you know. But I think at the end, uh, you know, when he, you really. Yeah, I'm not sure this this move. I'm not quite sure about, but e5. Yeah, I'm just surprised he didn't just take with the pawn, because now he can switch back on the e file, and there are certain weak squares now in your position. Okay, e4 square is weak. Uh, e4, f4. There are some weak squares in the position. Okay. All right, let's see. We have a, a, a game from Daniel. Daniel. Maya? Maya. Do you want an ET? Yeah. Okay. Maya. Uh, and uh, thank you for submitting your game. Okay, please tell a little bit about yourself in the future when you submit the game. That'll be easier. You know, tell your name. Uh, maybe say your name, where you're from your rating, a little bit more details, so that way we can refer to you, you know, we assume your name, you know, is you know, what your account is, but anyway, just introduce yourself a little bit, you know, you're, you know, if you're a young player, you can mention your age, you know, I'm 10 years old, you know, and then submit your game, and you can mention where this game was played, if it's a tournament game. So, Daniel against Dok Vasabi, we, <laughs> we're not sure, but well, this looks like this is played in uh, chess, club chess, chess.com, I guess. Okay, F5, everybody. What is the name of this opening? Should be lots of hands here. What is the name of this? Which one? No, it's got a very specific name. Yes. Yes. The Dutch defense, correct. Dutch defense and... This was very popular about a couple of years ago. You had Carlson playing this, Nakamura playing this, Kamsky playing this. Carlson lost the game, and I haven't seen him play Dutch since then. He lost the game to Radek Wojtasek in a Chorus tournament, Tata Steel tournament, uh, and he lost to him in this. Okay, Bishop F4, interesting approach. Not really playing any of the main lines with C4, Knight F3, G3. This is my favorite move, to be honest. I don't know if it's going to transpose later, but I quite like this move with a very direct idea. Very direct idea saying, you know, I want to play this move, e4. I'm sorry? Where you lose d5 is my game against Gata Kamsky. If you remember 2014 US Championship, it's my game in 2014. So he played here, I played here, Gata went here. I went here, and it's a game. It's mm. I got a pretty nice position, and I end up drawing the game. It was a bit disappointing. At some point, I had something like 50 minute advantage on the clock, because I knew the opening very well, and he w he wasn't so familiar with the idea. So I had a really pleasant position. Okay, so maybe at some point I can show you that game. Okay, uh, so that's basically what you do. But bishop f4, I'm not sure how good this move is, because it's a bit, uh, it's unclear, right? I mean, what is the bishop doing on f4? I mean, we don't know, yes? Very, may, very well might be, you know, he's trying to play the London, our young student mentioned, may, possibly, yes. Uh, it's just a bit strange to do this against the Dutch. So d6 makes sense, right, to shut down the bishop, knight f3. E3, H3. H3 is a typical move when you have bishop on a four because you want to have this shelter for the bishop to go to. 
on h2. Bishop b7. C3, yes, correct guess. London. Um, hmm. I haven't seen this too often, but I mean, uh, I mean, at the same time, white setup is, it's got to be suspicious, I mean, you know, it's just weakening, money. weakening all the, yeah, 12 pounds, yeah, it's possible, but it is, it's, it's important to understand in chess weaknesses, weak squares, weak, which pawn move weakens the position. In general, every pawn move weakens the position, you should know that, but here we just see a lot of holes, you know. A lot of light square holes we see in the position. So I'm not really liking what I see here from block here. So bishop d3, knight bd7, wait a minute. That's just a free pawn. So, and in chess, it's very important to remember when you make a, when an opponent makes a move, what is the very first thing you need to do? Ashish, what is the very first thing you need to do? When, when an opponent makes a move, anybody you're playing, doesn't matter, GM or a beginner, any level. What is the first thing you do? What is his threat? Yes. What is his threat? What is he threatening? What is the idea behind his move? Did you guys ask yourself that question? Very important you do that when you're playing. When you get stronger and stronger, at a higher level, we don't think that way all the time. But at the moment, it's a good way to think, okay? Until you reach to, uh, you know, master, you know, and, and higher levels. Every time an opponent makes a move, you stop and think. You say, what is he threatening? What is the idea behind this move? Uh, Black obviously didn't do that, and thank you very much for the pawn. And that is a very important pawn. Because now the king is going to be weak. He should be three, I'm not sure. When you have an active move, what you should do? Play, yeah? And now look at this idea. Boom. Mate. Or even look at that idea. Knight jumps in. Check. Knight e6. Very quickly, you know, you can turn this thing around, okay? Very quickly. So he took, he just went back. White is happy, he won a pawn. E4 now, getting aggressive. Queen C2. Okay. Well, yeah, just raise your hand only. Very good. So, so here you have an option here. You need to protect that pawn. So you can protect it with the queen, which he did. I don't like the square on C2 that was chosen, you know. I would have liked to put the queen on E2 here. But... Our young student here mentioned something else. Which piece is more natural to develop here? Yes. Um, knight to D2. Perfect. Knight goes to D2, developing, protecting the center. I mean, and that's just so much more comfortable. It's so much more comfortable, so much easier. Okay. Uh, bishop. G7, castles, E5. Okay, this approach I'm not sure if it's very good. Do you think white should be so direct attacking or he should try to finish his development? What you should do here? Yeah. He should try to finish his development first okay knight h5 yeah this is yeah knight bd2 is a better move here for sure bishop g6 okay <laughs> i don't think this works Yeah, I think uh, player with the white pieces got uh, very excited about the prospects of the attack, but attack could have been simply defended by a move queen e8. And now I'm not so clear what to do. Looks like 
this attack is just gonna simply fizzle out because you go here eliminate take I mean when peace is not developed what are you gonna mate with so very important to develop here okay Daniel you have to develop your pieces before you attack it worked in this game but against stronger opponent it wouldn't have worked the thing by the way there is a very important in-between move here known as swish and suck right who can find a swish and suck here the white missed white can probably win this if he finds that swish and suck do you see that idea Adik. oh yeah g5 and now you're threatening this now you're threatening to mate okay and if you move the rook just to escape check Winning the queen and the game. Yeah, so here again, development would have been better. Um, takes little later but still very effective so it was very important moment here to you know to, il to stop this knight g5 idea so white should have played the move queen to e8 exchanging the queens that would have been a very important move to play and exchange the queens but he didn't do that he took here Knight of six takes. Well, I think this is pretty strong. No, ninety six. No need to capture back. Better just set up a mating threat. Now you threaten a mate on g seven and attack the queen. Threatening mate on or the queen. E6. Queen E8 mate. Wow. It's funny, it's not so over if he plays this move. I mean it's might be bad, but so I think you have to take with the queen. This knight is hanging, so E94. I'm not, even, I'm not even quite sure if this position is that bad. So rook f6 because now the threat is checked, the threat is this. What to do, yeah? Boogie check is coming up. Very, very, very tough. Despite being down three pawns, I think I would have choose black here because <laughs> It's like, look, you try to develop, it's gonna backfire, you know? Black is just very, very active here. G2 is hanging and... G2 hangs, Rook D8 is threatened.
comes in and starts taking some pawns. And again, despite being down material, it's more comfortable to play this with the black pieces. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at one more game submitted. Check, check. Wait, so which team, so uh, why? So the, players, the person who spent is Sean Eric. Sean Eric submits the game that he lost. Let's see. All right, Sean, let's take a look. D4, D6. Okay, again we see a bishop f4. What's going on here? Everybody loving the London, huh? London, London system. London, it was the capital of the last year's you know, the world championship, you know, you know, the big match was there. The chess city, and then London Chess Classic was there, end of the year. So it was a lot of chess in the months of November, December. So a lot of people were actually going there, visiting. So, um, C6 played here. Why not D5? It seems so natural, you know? Play E5 to attack the center and question that bishop, no? It seems such a natural thing to do here. Play c6, c3. Conservative, very conservative. Knight f3, g6. Bishop d3, bishop g7. Knight bd2. Castle, castle. Queen c7. Again, now black still wants to play e5, but queen b3. Queen b3 here. It's a move. It's a possibility. Uh, okay, there are other moves to play here. a4, b4, queen b3. I'm not sure if it's optimal. I, I probably would have liked to see a move like h3 here played. h3, so if e5, I can tuck in the bishop on h2. This is probably what I would have liked to see. Okay? Queen b3, e5, take sticks. Wait a minute, bishop takes e5. What's happening here? So, looks like player with the white pieces, did it count it correctly here? You always need to have one more extra piece attacking something than the defenders are. So, if the, you're attacking it twice, is defended twice, you cannot take it. You need to be attacking it three times, one more extra time than the defender in order to take. Okay? But here we see the player with the white piece is taking a pawn, and that just that just drops a piece. And then knight went here, he dropped another piece, and that's game over right there. So this was a tough one, okay? Uh, I don't think we need to go further here. It's down two pieces. You're not going to save the game. You're playing a good opponent. Uh, so, I, I mean, this is reasonable. I mean, not uh, my favorite setup for white, but again, London players, they like to get this setup, you know. But, you know, if you do this, you better play h3 and look for possibilities to get some space on this side of the board, a4, b5. But I think just he just simply forgot the count, and then after that it was... In, in chess, sometimes you make one really bad move, and then that leads to more mistakes. And then another mistake occurred, and the game is over. There is no coming back after this now. Okay, let's take a look at one more game, the last one, and then I have a couple of positions for you to work on. So let's see here. This is a club staff member, Perry Colson, played as white against a much higher rated player on LI Chess. How many people here play on LI or Lee Chess? Wow, quite a few players, huh? Excellent. Yeah, it's uh, it's this new thing. It's been around what, like, let's say, two years now, year and a half, something like that. So it's and it's taking over. It's quite popular. It's free, and uh, you know they even have Magnus Carlsen play there sometimes. And I think he's got a couple of accounts. One of his accounts is, uh, I think, Doctor or Doctor or Mr. Doctor, yeah, Doctor Drunkenstein. So 
And he plays like a drunk opening there, yeah? He plays like, <laughs> yeah. He plays F3, King F2, then comes back, you know? Like he, you know. So anyway, so this is Perry, who works at the club. And we all know Perry. And so Perry, if you're watching, we are analyzing your game now. Against Barbosa. All right. Knight F3, so we have a Queen's Gambit. Decline because it was not captured, it was declined, okay, by this move. So knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, a6. It's interesting that this is what Magnus Carlsen plays in like blitz and rapid. So takes, takes, bishop f4, bishop d6, bishop g3. Castles, queen c2. Rook e8, e3. Bishop f8. Okay, that's very uh, strange. When you have a developed piece by going back on f8, I'm not sure what's the point of the move, but you're just simply undeveloping it. Okay, so uh, don't do that, basically. Also, b5. My parry goes 92. 92 is okay, but did white finish his development? Not yet, right? So maybe it would make sense to get the pieces out. Rook a c1, perhaps rook a c1, rook f d1. Can we get away with knight takes d5 and queen c6 with the fork? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Ninety five is a very, very attractive move too. Excellent move. Yeah. Uh, no, ninety five. Yeah. Now, now this, this, this would be really neat. Yeah. <laughs> if this is somehow allowed, you know, this would just be wonderful, no, for white. Look at that. Now we learn again. When, what? Sorry. Now we learn that every pawn move does what? Weak. Creates Weak. weaknesses. Weak squares. So you have to be very careful with the pawn moves. Okay. Don't just make a pawn move thing, it's just gonna be okay. Your every pawn push has gotta make sense. It's gotta have an idea, okay? Every pawn move, every pawn idea has gotta make sense, okay? You cannot just do it because you, you feel like you gotta do it. You know what I mean? Very important to remember. Yeah, 95 I quite like. I think this should be seven. Then you wanna play f4? Uh, bar, my idea was knight captures the on C6 with the queen. Wait, so, go back with it. oh, oh yeah. yeah. Knight D5, ah, your idea is Knight D5, sorry. So I thought I you say Knight D5. The, this is very interesting, okay. Takes, 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 but this is Knight B6 here. Right. Or Knight B4 even, yeah. No, this, this, generally this kind of tactics, sometimes they work. Sometimes they work, but normally you need to have a king in the middle, normally, for just to work, you know? But I actually like this, you know, because I like this very, very much, you know? Because of knight c6 ideas, and I like this very much. So I think this is just absolutely wonderful, knight c6, trapping the queen. So if he plays bishop b7, then I go, uh, I like f4. Okay. 92, bishop d6, queen c6, attacking the rook. Okay, it looks like, I feel like c5 need to be played here, you know. I feel like c5 you need to prevent this entrances of the queen. Bishop d6, queen c6. By the way, one thing I want to mention to everybody here and also our YouTube audience, game analysis is one of the most important things any player should do. That's where you improve the most when you play the games and analyze them afterwards. Ideally, you analyze them with a coach, a person who will tell you the moves. But if you don't have a coach, then you can analyze using some of the engines, okay? Engines will just point out the moves. They won't tell you why you do this move. But at least they'll give you an idea where, which direction to go to. I personally, I have you know, many students that I train 
online and in person here in St. Louis. So it's very important. The first thing I do when they finish the tournament, next lesson, I'll ask them to bring their score sheets or if they put a moves in, in a computer or this. So that's the very first thing we do, game analysis. You should not play another tournament until you analyze the previous tournament games. In Soviet chess school, it was actually, they would really forbid the students from playing any other tournaments until they really deeply analyze all the games they played. Because if you don't analyze your games, let's imagine you just keep playing. You never analyze your games for like, for a couple of months, similar mistakes you're gonna make. You made one mistake in this tournament, you're gonna make a similar mistakes, opening mistake or ideas. So that's why, analyze your games. It's really, really big part will be for your improvement. Knight b6, bishop d7, now going back. Okay, maybe bishop d6 should have been played here first. C8, 95. Wow. Did you guys see how Perry got the exchange? He went here. Now he wants to go some knight c6 ideas. Takes. Now, if knight captures any of the knights, bishop d6 is hanging. So, this is hanging. And if queen takes, which happened in the game, that run into a powerful bishop f5 attacking the queen and the rook winning material and now look at that nice do you uh do bishop takes g3 before trying to take the knight back here yeah but then then there is a nice in between check check and then it just takes oh it's just down a piece okay so so you can, unfortunately, because of that in-between check. So takes. And let's just quickly look at the conversion. Oh, wait. Now it took rook c5. At least black should retreat with the queen. And OK, he's losing, but this is just down a rook and down the exchange. OK, so this, we don't really need to analyze this position. This, you know, you should be able to win this, no problem, OK? So game analysis is very important, OK? Please, very important. OK, let's do one uh, very important study position for you. If you're familiar with it, please raise your hand. Don't say the moves, because I'm sure there will be some players who are not familiar with this study. Illegal position. All right, now it's legal. How many people know this position? Raise your hand, because I might have shown this before. So we have one, two students who are familiar with. OK, double check. Go through the answer. Double check all the moves, because there are three different moves black can play. So there is something you can definitely review. Uh, sorry, it's white to play and win. White to play and win. Again, uh, encourage to send your games to info at stlouischessclub.org. Again, in the, in the beginning of your game, just introduce yourself, your name, you know, where you live, and where the game was played. So we, for the game analysis, we'll know who, whose game we're analyzing. We don't have to guess the name. Uh, it'll be easier a little bit. OK. I'll give you two more minutes. Two more minutes, OK? Then we're going to look at this position. Two more minutes.
Okay, please raise your hand if you know the first move. Small hint for you, maybe not so small, but uh, you have to put black king in a suksavang. Okay, so you kind of you want to you want to force his queen to move. If his queen needs to move, then we get some ideas. Adi, bravo. That puts his king in the sook, and if he does the check like this, you can go b8, knight. Look at that. You can probably put a queen too, but I like knight better because it's checkmate. So he has to sacrifice, and now how you take to avoid the steal mate? Queen take. And now he goes here, you just mate. Okay? With the king and queen. So he's not going to do that, so he's got one, two, three, four options. Okay? Four options, four possibilities. So what do we do? Four options, four possibilities. Queen H1. Well, Queen D5 first. First things first, Ashish. Adi. And if he takes? Thank you very much. Okay. So that's out. Queen F3. Take. Check. King moves away, you take the queen. Got it? If he goes here now, what do you do? Better. Queen what? Queen A3, bravo. Again, deflection. Same idea, same mechanism works here, okay? Deflection. And now we go down to the most important move. Queen H1, the same idea might not work here. Shish, uh, Adik. Okay. Now. Okay. That's it. Winning the queen. And if he goes here, and if he goes here, sorry, I mean in this line, raise your hands please. The winning move is, should be more hands, I see only few. Yes? Bravo. Look at that move. Long range move, okay? Long range move. You, have to, you always have to look at the whole 64 squares when you're playing chess. Never be focused on one area of the board. The whole 64 squares needs to be observed. Now check. He has to take. Now he has to take. Okay. Excellent. 
Any questions? Yeah, this is a very nice study. It's a classical study, okay? I also recommend you guys work on studies. And this, this will help you to, uh, with your imagination, with see many different patterns, you know? Like you put the king in a steel-made situation, then he has to start moving the queen, okay? So remember that. Those are very, very important things to do. Okay, thank you everybody for attending this class. We're gonna take a little break. We'll have one more class after this, so if you have time, stick around for the next class. And that class has got a very nice, interesting name, uh, Chess in the Romantic Era, okay? So we're gonna look at some romantic chess games. <laughs> okay, see you in a little bit.